According to Reuters, the Bank of Japan must immediately end its negative interest rate policy as it has allowed companies to delay efforts to boost productivity by keeping borrowing costs ultra-low, said ruling party heavyweight Shigeru Ishiba. It's an extreme policy that shouldn't exist in the first place, Ishiba said of negative interest rates, adding that ultra-low rates can be justified only in times of crisis. According to Bloomberg, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is pressing forward with his campaign for higher wages as his slumping support rate levels out and speculation re-emerges that he could opt to call a general election this year. Kishida will underscore the need for pay rises to bolster the economy in a speech to Parliament Tuesday that will lay out his agenda for the new session, according to Kyoto News. Dismayed at wage rises falling short of inflation and angered by a widespread political slush fund scandal, voters sent his disapproval rating to a record level in a recent poll. The speech is planned for 1 p.m. Japan time. According to Bloomberg, Singapore said investment commitments last year slowed to 12.7 billion Singapore dollars from a record 22.5 billion Singapore dollars in 2022, with authorities viewing the performance as a show of confidence in the city-state in a tough global business environment. The commitments are expected to create 20,045 jobs over the next five years, according to the Economic Development Board, the country's investment promotion agency. About 58% of those jobs are likely to be in services, 26% in research and development and the remaining 16% in manufacturing. According to Reuters, an Australian court on Tuesday heard closing arguments in a class action lawsuit alleging that a weed killer produced by Bayer caused cancer, the first such case in Australia to reach this stage. Bayer has already paid billions of dollars to settle claims that exposure to its glyphosate herbicide, Roundup, damaged health, in most cases by causing non-Hodgkin lymphoma, a blood cancer. According to Reuters, Swedish fashion retailer Hem is under pressure to prove to investors it can turn its fortunes around and fend off fierce competition from fast fashion rivals such as Zara, whose sales are rising, and China-founded Shine, set to go public this year. Hem, which sold more than $22 billion in clothing and accessories in its 2023 financial year, aims to reach an operating margin of 10% by the end of 2024. According to Reuters, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said on Tuesday his government would do everything possible to achieve real income growth to put a decisive end to deflation. The biggest mission for my administration is to revive the economy, Kishida told the lower house plenary in a policy speech marking the start of the regular parliament sessions. According to Reuters, South Korea's exports likely rose for a fourth straight month in January on growing chip sales, with the headline figure pushed up further by calendar effects, a Reuters poll showed on Tuesday. Exports out of Asia's fourth-largest economy are expected to have risen 17.8% in January from a year earlier, faster than a gain of 5.0% in December, according to the median estimate of 17 economists in the survey conducted January 23-29. According to Reuters, Japanese government bond yields tracked U.S. yields lower on Tuesday after the Treasury Department said it would need to borrow less than previously estimated. Two-year JGB yields received some upward pressure after an auction of the securities was met with lackluster demand, but the effect was short-lived. According to Reuters, Russian air defense systems destroyed or intercepted 21 Ukraine-launched drones over the Crimean Peninsula and several Russian regions. Russian news agencies reported on Tuesday, citing Moscow's defense ministry. Russia's systems downed 11 of the drones over Crimea, Ria State News Agency reported. Russia annexed Crimea from Ukraine in 2014 in a move condemned by Kyiv's Western allies as an illegal land grab. According to Bloomberg, President Joe Biden's administration is seeking a response to the deadly attack on U.S. forces in Jordan that's tough enough to deter Iran and its proxies without sparking direct warfare with the Islamic Republic, according to officials and experts. We will do whatever we need to do to protect our forces going forward, but certainly at the end of the day we are not looking to engage in a wider conflict but merely to ensure regional security and stability, Major General Pat Ryder, a Pentagon spokesperson, said Monday in an interview on Bloomberg Television. According to Bloomberg, Asia stocks slipped Tuesday, led by a sell-off in Hong Kong equities as the liquidation of a large Chinese developer intensified concerns over the nation's embattled real estate sector. 
stocks in Hong Kong fell around 2%, while those on the mainland were poised to decline for a third day. The impact of China Evergrande Group's liquidation order pushed a Bloomberg index of Chinese developers down almost 4%. According to Bloomberg, oil was steady as the market waited for a U.S. response to the deadly attack on American troops in Jordan, which could risk an escalation of tensions in a region key to global crude production. West Texas Intermediate was close to $77 a barrel in early Asian trading after losing 1.6% on Monday despite the drone assault on U.S. soldiers, which Iran sought to distance itself from. Brent crude also closed lower near $82. Data showing that OPEC Plus appears to be making a slow start to its latest output cuts put downward pressure on prices. According to Bloomberg, Hong Kong unveiled the first details of the city's long-awaited domestic security law, including plans to expand the definition of state secrets and step up efforts to ward against foreign interference. Chief Executive John Lee, who has overseen a broad clampdown on dissent, said it was the city's constitutional duty to enact the legislation, known as Article 23, at a press briefing on Tuesday. The public will now have until the end of February to comment on a 110-page consultation document, which was released on the government website. According to Reuters, Clean energy stocks might be in for a much-needed recharge this year as bets on interest rate cuts brighten their outlook following record outflows from this former ESG hotspot. Cost overruns, supply bottlenecks, and financing troubles have plagued debt-intensive wind and solar projects, but cheaper valuations are starting to lure investors looking to pick up bargains. According to Bloomberg, Warren Buffett can cause executives angst when he invests in their companies. Japan's trading firms illustrate this point. Berkshire Hathaway Inc. bought stakes in them in August 2020, which raised their international profile and attracted other investors. Over the next four years, the five companies outperformed the broader market. According to Bloomberg, after the worst quarter in its roughly two-decade history, ESG's future is once again a subject of intense debate. Against a backdrop of attacks by the Republican Party and lackluster returns, ESG funds in the U.S. bled more than a net $5 billion in the final three months of 2023. Combined with a huge decline in the pace of inflows in Europe, the global market for funds claiming to pursue environmental, social or governance goals suffered its first ever net redemptions last quarter, according to Morningstar Inc. According to Reuters, Asian stocks stumbled on Tuesday as the court-ordered liquidation of property giant China Evergrande weighed on sentiment while geopolitical tensions lifted oil prices and dented risk appetite ahead of the Federal Reserve's meeting. U.S. Treasury yields remained under pressure in Asian hours, keeping a lid on dollar movement, after the Treasury Department said it would need to borrow less than its previous estimates. According to Reuters, Japan, the world's second biggest buyer of liquefied natural gas, is concerned that a temporary suspension of U.S. export permits may delay the launch of new LNG facilities in the United States, Industry Minister Ken Saito said on Tuesday. U.S. President Joe Biden last week paused approvals for pending and future applications to export LNG from new projects, a move cheered by climate activists that could delay decisions on new plants until after the November 5 election. According to Reuters, the sickly state of the German economy is the next big challenge for the export-reliant countries of Central Europe, which are still recovering from some of the world's worst inflation spikes in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Close trade ties with Germany and its once-mighty auto sector were for years a boon for the region since the collapse of communism. But now those ties risk becoming a drag on the economies of Hungary, Czech Republic and Slovakia. According to Bloomberg, Chinese developer Sino Ocean Group Holding Limited told a key group of its dollar bond creditors that it will prioritize repaying its local debt, according to people familiar with the matter. The state-linked distressed builder didn't present a restructuring plan for its offshore debt at its first so-called principal-to-principal meeting with the ad hoc creditor group earlier this month, said the people who asked not to be identified discussing private matters. According to Bloomberg, France narrowly escaped a recession in the latter half of 2023 as exports offset weaker demand at home, offering hope that the eurozone can also dodge a downturn. Gross domestic product in the region's second-largest economy stagnated in the fourth quarter, with investment and consumer spending both dwindling.
That's in line with the forecast from analysts surveyed by Bloomberg. Statistics agency INSEE revised the third quarter number up to zero from a 0.1% contraction previously. According to Reuters, Toyota Motor retained its crown as the world's top-selling automaker for the fourth consecutive year after posting record annual sales of 11.2 million in 2023, though its chairman apologized on Tuesday for scandals at three group companies. The Japanese automaker reported a 7.2% jump in global group sales last year, including those at small car maker Daihatsu and truck unit Hino Motors. According to Bloomberg, Saudi Aramco abandoned a plan to boost its oil output capacity in a huge reversal that will raise questions about the kingdom's view on future oil demand. The surprise move comes after the world's biggest oil producer had said in November that it was progressing, very well, with a multi-billion dollar project to boost capacity to 13 million barrels a day by 2027 as demand in China and India continues to grow. Saudi Arabia currently has capacity for 12 million and is producing about 9 million a day, after it curbed output as part of OPEC plus efforts to revive the global oil market and prevent a surplus. According to Reuters, South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol blocked on Tuesday a bill to launch a new probe into a Halloween crowd crush that killed 159 people in Seoul Zitaewon district in 2022, in a move slammed by the opposition and relatives of the victims. According to Bloomberg, Bitcoin is on course to advance for a fifth straight month in what would be the token's longest such winning streak since a pandemic-era rally oiled by easy money. The largest digital asset has risen about 2% in January, a month of pronounced swings sparked by the rollout of the first US spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds and shifting views on the outlook for monetary policy. According to Bloomberg, Iran urged the US to use diplomacy to ease tensions in the Middle East, as Tehran braces for a military response to a deadly attack on an American base over the weekend. The foreign minister of the Islamic Republic said, active, diplomacy is underway to find a political solution to the war in Gaza and the regional fallout, without elaborating. According to Bloomberg, Turkey on Tuesday amended regulations to deter savers from flocking to foreign currencies and relieve pressure on the lira after ending an aggressive cycle of interest rate hikes this month. The central bank is making it more costly for commercial lenders to have deposits in hard currencies, while at the same time easing mandatory reserve requirements on some foreign exchange-linked accounts, which are part of a government-backed savings program meant to shore up the lira. According to Reuters, Singaporean wealth management specialist WRISE Group has named Dhruba Jyoti Sengupta as chief executive of its Middle East operations and lead its expansion in the region, the company said on Tuesday. In his new role, DJ Sengupta will build a team at WRISE's office in Dubai that will focus on meeting wealth management demands from ultra-high net worth investors flocking to the region. According to Bloomberg, Chinese stocks slid on Tuesday, with a benchmark heading for a third straight day of declines, underscoring the need for policymakers to take more steps to revive investor confidence. The MSCI China index slumped more than 2% in the morning session. Losses have resumed after hopes of a stimulus package as well as a move by the central bank to cut the reserve requirement ratio. The amount of cash lenders must keep in reserve helped stoke a three-day rally in shares last week. According to Bloomberg, Indian steel demand is likely to grow 8% to 10% in the medium term, underpinned by robust economic growth in the world's second biggest consumer of the alloy, according to the country's largest mill. JSW Steel Limited said it's forecasting an even more dramatic 15% nationwide expansion in the year through March to 135 million tons, and then very healthy growth through the rest of the 2020s. According to Reuters, any liquidation of property giant Evergrande hinges on Chinese authorities recognizing the ruling of a Hong Kong court, in a decision that could also affect the city's standing as a global financial center, legal practitioners said. A Hong Kong court on Monday ordered China Evergrande Group, the world's most indebted developer with nearly $300 billion worth of liabilities, to be liquidated after around 18 months of failed negotiations with offshore creditors. According to Reuters, Norway's $1.6 trillion sovereign wealth fund, the world's largest, posted a record profit of 2.22 trillion Norwegian crowns in 2023, driven by strong returns on its investments in technology stocks. 
The result swung from a record loss in 2022 of 1.64 trillion crowns, Norga's bank investment management said on Tuesday. According to Reuters, five of the Bank of Korea's six board members think monetary policy needs to stay restrictive for some time to bring inflation down to its 2% target as supply-side uncertainties persist, minutes of the bank's January 11 meeting showed on Tuesday. The BAC held its benchmark rate at 3.50% for an eighth meeting in January and hinted it may pivot towards monetary easing along with its global peers, an outcome correctly forecast by all 38 economists polled by Reuters. According to Reuters, Zurich Insurance on Tuesday said its plan to offload its $20 billion Zurich Life Legacy back book in Germany to Viridium has fallen through after the insurance consolidator pulled out of the deal. The Swiss insurance group said it was committed to finding a solution for the portfolio, which administers around 700,000 life insurance policies in Germany, and would continue to explore options. According to Reuters, Elvira Nabulina, the head of Russia's central bank, heralded her return to work following a short absence with a signal on Tuesday that rates were set to come down later this year and a new plan for how the bank communicates key rate decisions. Nabulina has been out of the public eye for two weeks. Her. According to Reuters, Japan's Canon said on Tuesday that early interest in its new lithography chipmaking machines is exceeding expectations as it makes a major push to close the gap with Dutch company ASML. ASML has become Europe's most valuable tech company with its extreme ultraviolet lithography machines, which use beams of light to create circuitry and are employed by TSMC and Intel to create cutting-edge chips. According to Bloomberg, the French government plans to take new measures on Tuesday to address farmers' concerns over rising costs and European regulations as protesters continue to block highways around Paris. Prime Minister Gabriel Attal met again with union leaders late Monday after concessions he made in the previous three days failed to bring an end to the unrest that began around two weeks ago. According to Bloomberg, Renault saw a rose after scrapping plans to list its electric vehicle business, reversing course on what would have been one of Europe's biggest initial public offerings this year. The French maker of the Twingo and Megane E-Tech said unfavorable markets for listings led to the decision though slower-than-expected EV demand also played a role. The shares rose as much as 5%, trimming losses over the past year to 3%. According to Bloomberg, Zhou Lu Fu Jewelry Company is considering an initial public offering in Hong Kong as soon as this year, according to people with knowledge of the matter. The Chinese jewelry chain store operator has held discussions with potential advisors and is close to picking banks for the first-time share sale, the people said. A listing could raise a couple of hundred million dollars and value the firm at more than 10 billion yuan, the people said, asking not to be identified as the information is private. According to Reuters, the German economy shrank in the fourth quarter, with gross domestic product down 0.3% on the previous three-month period in adjusted terms, preliminary data from the statistics office showed on Tuesday. The decline was in line with analysts' expectations, according to a Reuters poll. According to Reuters, Super Microcomputer's stock jumped almost 10% to a record high in extended trade on Monday, extending its recent eye-fueled rally after the server seller projected stronger-than-expected quarterly sales. The San Jose, California, company's report after the bell also lifted shares of NVIDIA by 1.2%, adding to a 2.3% gain during Monday's session that saw the world's most valuable chipmaker close at a record high. According to Reuters, a liquidation order for China's most debt-laden developer begins a drawn-out process for creditors that is likely to lay bare the depths of China's real estate downturn and leave builders locked out of global debt markets as investors shun exposure. A Hong Kong court appointed liquidators for China Evergrande on Monday, more than two years after its default brought a years-long property boom to a shuddering halt. According to Reuters, Volkswagen said it was sticking to its financing timeline for battery unit Powercoa preparing for a strategic investor this year, after Bloomberg reported that it was pushing back its plans, citing people familiar with the matter. The interest we see from investors remains high. An IPO is a tangible option in the future, Volkswagen said in a statement, repeating its previous position on the matter. According to Reuters, 
Higher than expected Spanish inflation data jolted Eurozone bond yields off two-week lows hit in early trading Tuesday on the back of market expectations of a European central bank rate cut as soon as April, and positive news from the US Treasury. Traders were also digesting German and French GDP data released on Tuesday showing the Eurozone's largest economy shrank 0.3% in the fourth quarter and its second largest economy failed to grow, both in line with analyst expectations. According to Reuters, global stocks traded at two-year highs and the dollar edged up on Tuesday ahead of a Federal Reserve meeting, while Asian equities took a knock from the court-ordered liquidation of Chinese property giant Evergrande. U.S. Treasuries benefited from a flurry of buying, pushing yields lower, which in turn kept the dollar in a tight range, after the Treasury Department said it would need to borrow less than it previously thought. According to Reuters, Germany raised installed offshore power wind capacity by 257 megawatts in 2023 to reach 8,465 megawatts but needs to step up the pace to meet a target of 30,000 megawatts by the end of 2030, industry groups said on Tuesday. Wind power is central to Germany's renewable energy transition as Berlin aims to generate at least 80% of electricity output by 2030 from green sources such as solar and wind compared with around 50% now. According to Bloomberg, Asian liquefied natural gas buyers have begun looking for alternatives to offset potential delays to U.S. projects hit by a moratorium on new approvals, in a potential boost for rival exporters. Buyers, including those in top importers China and Japan, are reviewing options including new talks with already licensed projects in the U.S. or suppliers from other nations, according to people with knowledge of the matter. According to Reuters, the Eurozone economy narrowly avoided a technical recession in the last three months of 2023 despite shrinking output in Germany, mainly thanks to strong growth in Spain and Portugal and a modest increase in Italy, data showed on Tuesday. A preliminary estimate from the European Union Statistics Office Eurostat said gross domestic product in the 20 countries sharing the euro currency was flat in the fourth quarter against the previous three months. According to Reuters, Germany's health ministry said on Tuesday any changes to a law that keeps the health insurance system from paying for weight loss drugs were not on the agenda, dismissing remarks by an Eli Lilly executive that talks were afoot to relax the ban. There are currently no plans to change the policy on coverage of pharmaceuticals for weight loss, a ministry spokesperson said in a statement, responding to a request from Reuters. According to Reuters, the Kremlin, asked on Tuesday about potential U.S. strikes on Iranian interests, said tensions in the Middle East were high and that steps were needed to de-escalate rather than destabilize the wider region. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin on Monday vowed the U.S. would take all necessary actions to defend its troops after a deadly drone attack in Jordan by Iran-backed militants, even as President Joe Biden's administration stressed it was not seeking a war with Iran. According to Reuters, Sumitomo Mitsui Financial Group, Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group and Mizuo Financial Group will lend Nippon Steel a combined $16 billion for its planned acquisition of U.S. Steel, Bloomberg reported on Tuesday. Citing several unnamed sources, Bloomberg said the three Japanese megabanks had extended a commitment letter to Nippon Steel for the dollar-denominated loans. According to Reuters, Sodexo shareholders on Tuesday approved the spin-off of its voucher and benefits division Pluxy, paving the way for its listing on Euronext Paris on February 1. French food caterer, which is benefiting from the cost of living crisis as employers look for ways to support staff without hiking wages, announced in April 2023 a plan to spin off and list the voucher unit in 2024, betting on the good performance of the business. According to Yahoo Finance, the stock market is still all about tech. New data from FactSet shows that while strategists have called for a broadening out of the market rally, they expect big tech companies to drive Q4 earnings growth for the SP500. According to Bloomberg, HSBC Holdings PLC was fined £57.4 million by the UK for failings tied to the way it marked deposits eligible for protection in the event the bank failed. The Prudential Regulation Authority said the penalty was its second highest fine ever and reflects the seriousness of the failings that occurred between 2015 and 2022, according to a statement on Tuesday. The shortcomings included the failure to accurately identify deposits that were eligible for protection under the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, the regulator said.
According to Bloomberg, China Evergrande Group creditors are set to recover just a fraction of the billions of dollars worth of the builder's debt they hold, with most of its assets likely hard to access for liquidators. Almost all of Evergrande's assets are in mainland China, presenting legal hurdles for non-Chinese administrators. The key Hong Kong holdings add up to just $2.9 billion compared with $25.4 billion in offshore liabilities as of the end of June 2022, according to a court document in Bloomberg's calculations. According to Bloomberg, sign up for the India Edition newsletter by Manaka Doshi, an insider's guide to the emerging economic powerhouse, and the billionaires and businesses behind its rise, delivered weekly. It's taken almost two years but an almost 80% rally since late March has given investors who bought shares of Life Insurance Corp. of India in the nation's biggest initial public offering a chance to recover their investment. According to Reuters, concern that hedge fund portfolios contain too many of the same trades has shot up the worry list for global investors with hedge fund exposure, a Bank of America survey shows. Over a fifth of big investors, such as pension funds and insurance companies, pointed to crowded trades as a top concern, said the survey about 2023 year-end sentiment which was released on Monday and seen by Reuters on Tuesday. According to Reuters, a former partner of Freshfields was sentenced on Tuesday to three years and six months for his role in a multi-billion euro German tax fraud scheme that has ensnared scores of domestic and global banks and hundreds of individuals. Prosecutors accused the tax lawyer, Ulf Johanman, of assisting a client in tax evasion and pushed for a sentence of 5.5 years. According to Reuters, in economic projections issued after their December meeting U.S. Federal Reserve officials on balance saw a measure of underlying inflation ending 2024 at 2.4%, with the lowest of individual estimates at 2.3%. Economists note that would require inflation to reaccelerate from its current six-month trend of just 1.9%, something many consider unlikely given the underlying math is already leaning towards at least a few more months of slowing. According to Reuters, Decision time is close at hand for the Federal Reserve to plan the mechanics of how it ends the wind-down of a balance sheet that remains swollen by historic standards. A readout of the U.S. Central Bank's final meeting of 2023 showed, several policymakers were ready to kick off discussion about how to stop the quantitative tightening process that has seen roughly $1.3 trillion of bonds roll off a balance sheet that topped out at around $9 trillion in mid-2022. According to Reuters, Futures on Wall Street's main indexes were muted on Tuesday, as investors braced for a crucial jobs report to gauge the U.S. labor market's strength, and awaited high-profile tech earnings for clues on whether megacaps could sustain a recent rally. With the U.S. Federal Reserve kicking off its two-day policy meeting later in the day, all eyes will be on the Labor Department's JOLTS report at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, which is expected to show job openings fell to 8.750 million in December. According to Reuters, Ford Motor said on Tuesday it would supply more than 1,000 F-150 Lightning and Mustang Mach-E electric vehicles to Ecolab to replace the water treatment firm's gas-powered vehicles in California. Ecolab said it was planning to replace all 11,000 vehicles in its North American fleet with EVs by 2030. According to Reuters, Global buyout firm KKR Company and South Korea's Taeyong Group are planning to sell their joint venture eCorbit in a deal that could value the environment company at more than $2 billion, two people with knowledge of the matter said. The firms have mandated Citigroup and UBS to manage the sale process, which is expected to begin in the next couple of months, said the people, who declined to be identified as the information is confidential. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in U.S. and global markets from Mike Dolan. Spurred by falling estimates of U.S. Treasury borrowing, a sweep of megacap earnings updates and this week's upcoming Federal Reserve decision, Wall Street stocks and bonds have surged anew, in stark contrast to another slide in China's ailing markets. According to Yahoo Finance, stocks have surged to record highs at the start of 2024. Inflation has moderated, the Federal Reserve looks set to cut interest rates, and the vaunted, soft landing, for the U.S. economy is coming into view. According to Reuters, General Motors on Tuesday reported lower pre-tax profit for the fourth quarter but gave investors an upbeat outlook for 2024 and signaled more capital could be returned to shareholders. Consensus is growing that the U.S. economy, 
the job market and auto sales will continue to be resilient, GM chief executive Mary Barra told investors in a letter. According to Reuters, the exact date for the start of European Central Bank rate cuts is secondary, but once the bank starts moving it is likely do it in small increments with possible pauses, Croatian policymaker Boris Vucic said on Tuesday. The ECB last week kept interest rates unchanged but sounded increasingly upbeat on inflation, boosting markets' bets that it will start cutting rates sooner rather than later. According to Reuters, Ryanair is hoping that Poland's new pro-European government will support its growth plans in the country which assume a doubling in size over the next six to eight years, CEO Michael O'Leary said on Tuesday. A new government headed by former European Council President Donald Tusk took power in Poland in December after eight years of nationalist law and Justice Party rule. According to Reuters, Moroccan electricity and water utility ONEE signed on Tuesday a deal with renewable energy companies Nariva and GE Renova to conduct a feasibility study to replace fuel with green hydrogen to operate a 99-megawatt power plant. The plant is located in Layoun, the largest city in western Sahara, a territory Morocco considers its own but where the Algeria-backed Polisario Front seeks to establish its own state. GE Vernova will help Layoun power plant deliver electricity generated using 100% green hydrogen produced at Nariva's Layoun wind farm to support Morocco's expansion of renewable installed capacity from its current share of 40% to 52% by 2030, the three companies said in a joint statement. According to Yahoo Finance, GM reported a top and bottom line beat for the fourth quarter, and issued 2024 full-year profit guidance that matched its initial forecast for 2023, as the company looks to shake off the effects of the UAW strike and recalibrate its electric vehicle rollout, which the company admits has created some uncertainty. For the Q4, GM reported top-line revenue of $42.98 billion, beating the $39.53 billion consensus Bloomberg estimate although this figure was down compared to the $43.1 billion the company reported in Q4 2022. On the profitability front, GM reported adjusted EPS $1.24 versus $1.16 estimated, on adjusted EBIT of $1.757 billion, though that figure dropped 53.8% versus a year ago. According to Reuters, Britain's Labour Party, tipped in the polls to win an election later this year, said on Tuesday it wants to streamline business policy by scrapping talking shops and building closer relations with key regulators to speed up market reforms. Pictures of politicians donning a hard hat and getting out to visit businesses will always endure but they cannot be the be-all and end-all of our engagement, said Jonathan Reynolds, Labour spokesman on business. According to Reuters, Vertex Pharmaceuticals said on Tuesday its experimental drug for treating post-surgical pain succeeded in a pair of late-stage trials, a major milestone in the company's decades-long efforts to bring a non-opioid pain medicine to market. The drug was more effective in reducing the intensity of pain, measured by patients' self-reported rating of their discomfort, compared with a placebo after 48 hours in the two studies. According to Reuters, the European Commission said on Tuesday that it was continuing to pursue a trade agreement with the Mercosur bloc of countries, a day after the office of French President Emmanuel Macron said it understood the EU had put an end to talks. The discussions are continuing and the European Union continues to fulfill its objective of achieving an agreement that respects our sustainability goals and respects our sensitivities, particularly in agriculture, a Commission spokesperson said. According to Reuters, Supermicro computer shares rose nearly 11% before the bell on Tuesday after the artificial intelligence server maker delivered blowout quarterly results and raised its full-year revenue forecast significantly ahead of Wall Street estimates. The company, which counts NASA and Japan's NEC among its customers, lifted its fiscal 2024 revenue forecast range to $14.3 billion to $14.7 billion from $10 billion to $11 billion, and above analysts' estimate of $11.51 billion, according to LSEG data. According to Reuters, the US and China launched a joint counter-narcotics working group on Tuesday in the first overt sign of cooperation in tackling the spread of fentanyl since late 2019, before bilateral relations between the superpowers soured. It follows a key summit in San Francisco in November where US President Joe Biden and Chinese leader Xi Jinping agreed to work to curb fentanyl production and export, in a major breakthrough.
According to Reuters, measures proposed by the British government to restore Northern Ireland's power-sharing government offer a vast array of decent improvements, and, when finalised, will be published on Wednesday, Northern Ireland Minister Chris Heaton Harris said. Speaking outside Parliament after Northern Ireland's largest pro-Britain party said it had endorsed the proposals offered by the British government to end its boycott of the regional government, Heaton Harris said he looked forward to the restoration of Stormont as soon as possible. According to Reuters, JetBlue Airways said on Tuesday it was evaluating further cost cuts after the company forecast a fall in first quarter revenue amid early signs of softening domestic demand. The airline's shares were down 1.1% in pre-market trade. According to Reuters, German car sales are lagging the recovery in the global passenger car market, with 2024 sales expected to be 25% below pre-pandemic levels, data from German Auto Association VDA showed on Tuesday. The VDA expects the global passenger car market to grow by 2% this year to 77.4 million cars, close to the pre-pandemic level of 78.8 million. According to Reuters, MPLX, a midstream energy company, reported higher earnings for the fourth quarter of 2023 on Tuesday, as its pipelines transported an increased volume of energy products. Adjusted earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization attributable to MPLX were $1,623 million, compared with $1,454 million for the fourth quarter of 2022. According to Reuters, senior Russian security official Dmitry Medvedev told Japan on Tuesday it would have to drop territorial claims to a group of Pacific islands if it wanted to conclude a peace treaty with Russia formally ending World War II. The blunt remarks by Medvedev, a former president who is deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council, over what Moscow calls the Kuril Islands are likely to anger Japan which lays claim to four of the southernmost islands, which it calls the Northern Territories. According to Reuters, farmers set bales of hay ablaze to partly block access to Toulouse Airport in southwestern France on Tuesday and parked tractors across highways near Paris as they lobbied the government for help to make a living from their work. Farmers, who also want measures against cheap imports, are looking for more support from new Prime Minister Gabriel Adel, who will spell out his policy plans later on Tuesday, and from the Agriculture Minister, who is also due to make an announcement. According to Reuters, JetBlue Airways said on Tuesday it was evaluating further cost cuts after the company forecast a fall in first quarter revenue amid early signs of softening domestic demand. The airline's shares were down 1.1% in pre-market trade. According to Yahoo Finance, U.S. stock futures tipped slightly lower on Tuesday, holding near record highs as investors waited for Microsoft to lead out big tech results as earnings season roars into gear. SP500 futures slipped 0.1% after Monday's winning session lifted the benchmark to another all-time high. Dow Jones Industrial Average Futures also inched 0.1% lower, while contracts on the tech-heavy Nasdaq 100 traded flat. According to Reuters, cancer treatment maker 270Bio will sell all its experimental cell therapies to Regeneron Pharmaceuticals for an upfront payment of $5 million and focus on its sole approved product Abecma, the two companies said on Tuesday. 270Bio's shares rose more than 10% in pre-market trade. According to Reuters, Johnson Controls lowered its full-year profit expectations as the building products supplier continues to see a weakness in the global residential construction market. The company, which counts Siemens, Schneider and Honeywell as competitors, revised down its full-year adjusted profit outlook to be between $3.60 and $3.75 per share from $3.65 to $3.80 per share expected previously. According to Reuters, Investors withdrew over $100 billion from hedge funds last year in a second consecutive year of outflows of this scale, said a Nasdaq investment report on Tuesday. In December alone, investors removed roughly $26 billion from hedge funds, the largest monthly amount in 2023, the data firm's report showed. According to Reuters, One Equity Partners has promoted a longtime insider to a leadership role as founder Dick Cashin steps back from day-to-day -day operations at the middle market-focused private equity firm. One equity named Greg Belenfanti, a 17-year veteran at the firm, to the role of president, 
according to a statement seen by Reuters on Tuesday. Cashin will continue in his role as chairman of the buyout firm, which was spun out of J.P. Morgan Chase in 2015. According to Reuters, UK-based water technology company Pentair forecast first-quarter revenue below estimates on Tuesday due to softer demand for new pools and related services. Consumers in the United States are cutting back spending on discretionary items amid high borrowing costs, impacting Pentair's pool business, which makes filters and pumps and accounted for about 40% of net sales in 2022. According to Reuters, the International Monetary Fund slashed its 2024 economic growth projection for Argentina to a 2.8% contraction from a 2.8% expansion, dimming its view on output growth in Latin America as a whole as part of the fund's World Economic Outlook update on Tuesday. For Latin America and the Caribbean region, the IMF sees gross domestic product growth of 1.9% this year, 0.4 percentage point below the October estimate, even if the fund expects output growth in both Brazil and Mexico, the area's largest economies by far, to be slightly higher than three months ago. According to Yahoo Finance, the International Monetary Fund expects the globe to pull off a soft landing in 2024, skirting a recession while inflation falls. The US, China and large emerging markets are all expected to post higher growth as central banks begin easing high interest rates that have been used to cool economies around the world. According to Reuters, Stellantis Peugeot brand plans to use chat GPT to improve the voice assistant in its cars and vans, the French brand said on Tuesday, joining rivals such as Volkswagen and Mercedes-Benz in tapping the popular AI chatbot. We will introduce chat GPT in all cars, including the new E3008 model, and small commercial vehicles, Jerome Macheron, director of Peugeot's product plan, told a media call. According to Reuters, the International Monetary Fund on Tuesday projected emerging Asian economies would expand 5.2% this year, slowing from 2023 but revised up from its forecast three months ago on stronger than expected growth in China. The region's growth forecast for 2024, which compared with a 5.4% expansion last year, was upgraded 0.4 percentage point from October. In 2025, emerging and developing Asia is expected to grow 4.8%, the IMF said in its upgraded World Economic Outlook. According to Reuters, Blackstone-owned Indian home loans provider Adar Housing Finance is targeting a $600 million minus $650 million initial public offering at a valuation of up to $3 billion, two people with direct knowledge said on Tuesday. Private equity group Blackstone acquired Adar for about $300 million in 2019 as it bet on growing demand for affordable housing and financing in India. According to Reuters, the flagship debt restructuring process for low-income countries needs to speed up, otherwise there could be a series of disorderly, sovereign debt defaults, an International Monetary Fund official said on Tuesday. A clearer understanding is needed of what it means to treat creditors equally in the G20's common framework restructuring processes, Daniel Lee, who leads preparation of the IMF's World Economic Report, told Reuters in Johannesburg. According to Bloomberg, Black Swan author Nassim Nicholas Taleb said the U.S. deficit is swelling to a point that it would take a miracle to reverse the damage. So long as you have Congress keep extending the debt limit and doing deals because they're afraid of the consequences of doing the right thing, that's the political structure of the political system, eventually you're going to have a debt spiral, he said Monday night at an event for Universa Investments, the hedge fund firm he advises. And a debt spiral is like a death spiral. According to Reuters, JetBlue Airways said on Tuesday it was evaluating deeper cost cuts after the company forecast a fall in revenue and higher costs in the first quarter as it grapples with uneven travel demand. The airline's shares were down 1.5% in pre-market trade. According to Bloomberg, Norway's $1.6 trillion sovereign wealth fund failed to meet its benchmark for the first time in five years amid losses in unlisted real estate even as stock markets rebounded. The fund returned to profit last year, gaining 16.1%, equivalent to about $213 billion, according to a statement on Tuesday. It fell below its benchmark by 18 basis points, a first such miss since 2018.
According to Reuters, the liquidation of property giant China Evergrande Group was a crisis markets had expected and which Chinese banks have the heft to cope with, a top official at Norway's $1.6 trillion wealth fund told Reuters on Tuesday. On Monday, a Hong Kong court ordered the liquidation of the group, dealing a fresh blow to confidence in the country's fragile property market, and leading local policymakers to step up efforts to contain the crisis. According to Reuters, sterling fell against the euro on Tuesday after encouraging mortgage and shop prices data eased some pressure on the Bank of England to keep interest rates high as it prepares for its policy meeting this week. Sterling fell 0.4% against the euro to 85.57 pence and was set for its biggest one-day decline against the single currency since December. It was down 0.3% against the dollar at $1.2666. According to Reuters, Wall Street's main indexes were poised for a lower open on Tuesday, as investors assessed mixed earnings from legacy names such as United Parcel Service and General Motors while bracing for a key jobs report for insights into the labor market health. The United Parcel Service, the world's biggest package delivery company, slumped 6.8% in pre-market trading after forecasting annual revenue below street estimates. Peer FedEx also lost 1.8%. According to Reuters, Talks between European Union countries aimed at agreeing on more aid for Ukraine later this week remain difficult, a senior EU official said on Tuesday, despite Hungary having signaled its readiness for a compromise. EU leaders meet on Thursday to try agree on extending 50 billion euros in aid to Ukraine through 2027, as well as replenishing a military fund to arm Kyiv as it fights Russia's almost two-year-old full-scale invasion. According to Yahoo Finance, a sterling earnings report for Starbucks could be a tall order amid slowing U.S. demand and ongoing pressure in China. Overall, revenue is expected to jump 10.2% from a year ago to $9.6 billion, while adjusted earnings are expected to grow 22.5% to $0.93. Cents. According to Reuters, electronics equipment maker Amphenol said on Tuesday it plans to buy a unit of Carlyle companies for about $2 billion in cash. Carlisle Interconnect Technologies, the unit that supplies cables and connectors to defense and industrial end markets, is expected to broaden Amphenol's existing portfolio. According to Reuters, a senior United Airlines executive highlighted the widespread loss of experience in the aviation industry since the COVID-19 pandemic and said it may have contributed to recent problems at Boeing. Experience counts and they need to have a good experienced team riding the ship, Executive Vice President Finance Jerry Laterman told the Airline Economics Conference in Dublin. According to Reuters, U.S. home prices rose in November at the swiftest annual rate in 11 months, indicating a recovery in the housing market may be taking hold. Home prices grew 6.6% on a yearly basis after rising by 6.3% the month before, the Federal Housing Finance Agency said on Tuesday. That was the strongest annual growth since December 2022, when prices rose 6.8%. According to Reuters, specialty glassmaker Corning on Tuesday forecast first quarter profit below Wall Street expectations, as it grapples with lower demand for its optical fiber cables from telecom customers. The company expects adjusted profit between $0.32 cents and $0.38 cents per share, below analysts' estimates of $0.39, cents, according to LSEG data. It sees core sales at about $3.1 billion for the current quarter, compared with analysts' expectation of $3.18 billion. According to Reuters, the International Monetary Fund on Tuesday edged its forecast for global economic growth higher, upgrading the outlook for both the United States and China, the world's two largest economies, and citing faster-than-expected easing of inflation. The IMF's chief economist, Pierre-Olivier Goringas, said the global lender's updated world economic outlook showed that a soft landing was in sight, but overall growth and global trade still remained lower than the historical average. According to Bloomberg, currency traders are increasingly hedging against any turmoil stirred by policies expected under a potential Donald Trump presidency. In the options market, Demand for insurance against swings in the euro over the coming year has been rising ever since Trump won the Republican nomination in Iowa earlier this month. At the same time, a barometer of market positioning and sentiment has jumped in favor of the dollar, the world's preferred safe haven currency. 
According to Reuters, Nigeria's central bank has made an additional payment of $64.44 million of verified foreign exchange backlog owed to airlines, bringing total payments to $136.73 million, a spokesperson said on Tuesday. Africa's biggest economy has about $7 billion in forex forwards that have matured, a major concern for investors as foreign currency shortages continue to weigh down the Naira currency, despite assurances by the Central Bank of Nigeria to clear the backlog. According to Bloomberg, home price growth in the U.S. decelerated in November as high mortgage rates weighed on potential buyers. A national gauge of prices climbed 0.2% in November from October, according to seasonally adjusted data from SP CoreLogic Case Schiller. That's slower than the 0.6% gain in October from a month earlier. According to Reuters, United Parcel Service forecast annual revenue below Wall Street estimates on Tuesday as lower domestic and international e-commerce demand remained a drag. The world's biggest package delivery firm, seen as a bellwether for the U.S. economy, expects 2024 full-year revenue to be in the range of $92 billion to $94.5 billion, below analysts' estimates of $95.57 billion. According to Reuters, a strong margin recovery for consumer goods giants could face a setback as easing input costs after several quarters of biting inflation are offset by cautious customer spending even as product prices start to decline. With pandemic-era savings getting depleted and slow wage growth, customers, who had initially splurged and absorbed the price increases by the consumer goods companies, have tightened their purse strings. According to Reuters, Carnival said on Tuesday that its annual earnings would take a hit as the cruise operator reroutes ships that were due to transit the Red Sea. The company, which had forecast adjusted earnings per share of 93 cents for the full year 2024 in December, said it expects an impact of 7 cents to 8 cents to its profit due to the rerouting. According to Reuters, French President Emmanuel Macron on Tuesday said he wants the European Union to regulate chicken and grain imports from Ukraine and to allow flexibility on some of the bloc's farming rules to help soothe anger among French farmers. Macron, speaking during a state visit to Sweden as farmers parked tractors across highways in France and set bales of hay ablaze to partly block access to Toulouse Airport, also said he does not want a draft trade deal with the Mercosur bloc of South American countries to be signed as it stands now. According to Reuters, former Pakistani Prime Minister and cricket superstar Imran Khan received a 10-year jail sentence on Tuesday for leaking state secrets in the harshest punishment yet of multiple cases he faces. In prison since August, the popular 71-year-old Khan denies wrongdoing and accuses the military of persecution. Following are comments from analysts about what this means for Khan ahead of Pakistan's parliamentary election on February 8. According to Reuters, JetBlue Airways and Spirit Airlines are seeking an expedited appeal aimed at reversing a lower court ruling that blocked their $3.8 billion merger. The airlines in a joint court filing asked the first U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals to reverse the decision that they argue disregards the benefits of the transaction to the majority of the flying public. According to Reuters, German police have confiscated 50,000 Bitcoin worth $2.17 billion in the country's most extensive cryptocurrency seizure ever, it said in a statement on Tuesday. This is the most extensive seizure of Bitcoins by law enforcement authorities in the Federal Republic of Germany to date, police in the city of Dresden said. According to Reuters, benchmark U.S. 10-year Treasury yields fell to two-week lows Tuesday following a weaker-than-expected reading of U.S. home prices as investors continued to wait for Wednesday's Federal Reserve decision on interest rates. The decline in yields comes on the heels of Monday's announcement by the Treasury Department that it will not need to borrow as much as it had forecasted in October, alleviating some concern among investors about oversupply. According to Bloomberg, the International Monetary Fund revised down its growth estimate for Argentina, forecasting South America's second-largest economy will shrink for two consecutive years as President Javier Malay pushes for a significant policy adjustment. Argentina's gross domestic product will contract 2.8% this year as inflation soars, following a 1.1% decline in 2023, according to the IMF's latest estimates for the global economy published Tuesday. Back in October, the fund forecast 2.8% growth in 2024.
According to Yahoo Finance, Suits was the most streamed title of 2023, a sign that licensed content is here to stay. According to third-party rating service Nielsen, the USA Network series was viewed for nearly 58 billion minutes last year after it spent 12 consecutive weeks at the top of Nielsen's viewership charts. According to Reuters, U.S. job openings unexpectedly rose in December and data for the prior month was revised higher, suggesting the labor market likely remains too strong for the Federal Reserve to start cutting interest rates in the first quarter. Job openings, a measure of labor demand, were up 101,000 to 9.026 million on the last day of December, the Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics said in its monthly job openings and labor turnover survey, our JOLTS report, on Tuesday. According to Reuters, New York State's Attorney General's office said on Tuesday said it had sued Citibank for allegedly failing to protect customers from electronic fraud and reimburse victims, which it said had cost customers in the state millions of dollars. In a lawsuit filed in Manhattan Federal Court, Attorney General Letitia James asked Citibank to disgorge profits, pay a $5,000 fine for each instance in which it violated the law, and appoint a third-party monitor to identify all customers who were harmed. According to Yahoo Finance, Alphabet is set to release quarterly earnings after the bell on Tuesday, kicking off a big week for U.S. tech giants that will offer updates on the race for AI dominance, the state of the ad market, and an intensifying regulatory crackdown that coincides with a presidential election. Investors will be looking for details on the earnings call about the company's cloud business in addition to insight into Google's recent layoffs and its artificial intelligence initiatives. According to Reuters, U.S. consumer confidence increased to a two-year high in January amid slowing inflation and expectations that the Federal Reserve would start cutting interest rates soon. The conference board said on Tuesday that its consumer confidence index rose to 114.8 this month, the highest reading since December 2021, from a downwardly revised 108.0 in December. Economists polled by Reuters had forecast the index rising to 115.0 from the previously reported 110.7. According to Reuters, Whirlpool Corp. said on Tuesday its European business would start feeling the impact of the Red Sea crisis, as vessels sailing through one of the world's most important shipping routes come under attacks from the Iran-backed Houthi militia. The attacks have disrupted global trade as more ships take the safer route around southern Africa, adding between 10 and 15 days to transit times. According to Reuters, while automakers and suppliers are betting big on future demand for electric vehicles, a near-term global slowdown is causing pain, including bankruptcies, scrapped initial public offerings and production cuts. Investment in capacity and technology development has outrun actual EV demand, boosting pressure on companies to cut costs. According to Bloomberg, decentralized finance is proving once again that it remains the wild west of crypto. Speculators have poured almost $2 billion worth of Ether and derivative versions of the token into an experimental protocol that aims to make it easier for blockchain developers to set up a project on a bet they'll be rewarded with outsized returns once it goes live. On top of that, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of cryptocurrencies have been deposited on DeFi platforms such as Pendle Finance that are offering returns of 30% or more on expectations that incentive payouts from the platforms will be even higher. According to Bloomberg, U.S. consumer confidence increased in January to the highest level since the end of 2021 as Americans grew more upbeat about the economy and the job market amid more sanguine views about inflation. The conference board's gauge of sentiment increased to 114.8 from a revised 108 a month earlier, data published Tuesday showed. The January figure matched the median estimate in a Bloomberg survey. According to Reuters, Singtel said on Tuesday it was not looking to divest from its Optus unit, Australia's second-largest wireless operator, refuting a report from Australian Financial Review. AFR had earlier reported on Tuesday that Optus executives were exploring options including selling off the company's enterprise and business divisions. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden said on Tuesday he has made up his mind on how to respond to a drone attack that killed U.S. service members in Jordan as he weighs punishing Iran-backed militias without triggering a wider war. Biden, speaking to reporters as he left the White House on a campaign trip to Florida, did not elaborate on his decision, which came after consultations with top advisors at the White House.
According to Bloomberg, Citadel founder Ken Griffin praised Nikki Haley's qualifications to be president, but expressed doubts that she has a path to beat Donald Trump for the Republican Party nomination. It's a narrower road than it was eight weeks ago, Griffin said Tuesday at an MFA network conference in Miami, Florida. Her foreign policy experience, tremendous. Her ability to unite this country, phenomenal. I just don't know though, that at this moment, that's going to get her where she needs to get to in South Carolina. According to Yahoo Finance, there are more working-class Americans than any other voting bloc, and those blue-collar voters could be the decisive factor in this year's presidential election. Yet each political party is doing a poor job of addressing the needs and concerns of lower-income Americans. Political analysts have been spilling a lot of ink trying to figure out how Democrats or Republicans can gain an edge with working-class voters, broadly defined as adults without a college degree who get paid hourly. Yahoo Finance went straight to the source. We ran an online survey from January 23-26 asking people who identify as working class to tell us what they want from the nation's leaders, drawing answers from 1,269 respondents. According to Bloomberg, concerns about systemic risk in the market for private credit are overblown, Carlyle Group Inc. Chief Executive Officer Harvey Schwartz said. Carlyle doesn't have the levels of leverage, interconnectivity and concentration that create real problematic risk in the private credit market, Schwartz said Tuesday in an interview with Bloomberg at the iConnections Global Alts Conference in Miami Beach. According to Bloomberg, for bond traders worried that Jerome Powell will trigger a sell-off Wednesday by pushing back on their rate cut bets, there's a little historical consolation. Federal Reserve meetings are more likely to set off rallies instead. Since March 2022, even as the central bank pushed through its steepest monetary policy tightening in decades, the three days bookending its meetings provided a brief reprieve from the bond market pain. Ten-year Treasury yields actually fell by a total of 67 basis points during that window, breaking from the otherwise sharp push higher, data compiled by Bloomberg Show. According to Reuters, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak told the Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar in a phone call on Tuesday he was confident that Northern Ireland's power-sharing government could be restored soon, Sunak's spokeswoman said. The DUP announced in the early hours of Tuesday that the party had endorsed proposals agreed with London on the operation of post-Brexit trade rules that would allow it to end a near two-year boycott of the devolved government. According to Bloomberg, World No. 2 iron ore supplier Vale Saw delivered a bigger-than-expected increase in production last quarter in a result that may undermine prices of the key steelmaking ingredient. The Brazilian mining giant is accelerating production, posting its best December in five years, after investing in its prized Amazonian operations and improving performance at its oldest mines in the country's southeast. Production was up from both a year ago and the previous three months, with full-year output ahead of guidance. According to Reuters, whether Amazon.com can cash in on its delivery heft by boosting fee revenue from its buy with Prime service after a 2022 overhaul of its logistics network will be a big focus for investors when the e-commerce giant reports fourth quarter results on Thursday. Amazon's 200 million Prime members pay $14.99 per month or $139 annually for free shipping in a day or two, and with buy with Prime, launched in April 2022, merchants can extend the shipping offer to those prime customers. According to Reuters, General Motors said Tuesday it is cutting spending in half on troubled robotaxi unit crews, or by about $1 billion in 2024, but said it remains committed to the self-driving project. Last week, crews disclosed probes by the U.S. Justice Department and the Securities and Exchange Commission stemming from an October accident in which one of its robotaxis struck a pedestrian and dragged her 20 feet. Cruz and GM came under heavy criticism after the accident, and the California Department of Motor Vehicles revoked its permit to operate driverless vehicles. According to Reuters, the three co-founders of Alliance Bernstein's Autonomous Research Unit have quit, ahead of the U.S. investment firm merging its equities business with French bank Société Générale. Stuart Graham, a highly regarded banks analyst who joined Alliance Bernstein in 2019 after it bought the financial sector-focused research firm he co-founded, is leaving in March to take a six-month break from work, he told Reuters. According to Bloomberg, bond traders reduced bets on Federal Reserve interest rate cuts in 2024, with the odds of a move in March falling to about 1 in 3, 
after a report on U.S. job openings highlighted strength in the labor market. Traders also marked down the odds of Fed rate cuts in May, and priced in less monetary easing over the course of the year. Expectations for Fed easing fell on Tuesday to the lowest point since the last policy meeting in mid-December. The Fed's Rate Setting Committee concludes a two-day meeting on Wednesday at which no change is expected, however its statement and subsequent comments by Chair Jerome Powell may affect the outlook for interest rates. According to Reuters, specialty glassmaker Corning beat Wall Street estimates for fourth-quarter adjusted sales on Tuesday and said it was seeing increasing demand for its optical fiber cables used in data centers that process more generative artificial intelligence applications. Shares of Corning whose Gorilla Glass is used in smartphones by the likes of Samsung and Apple, rose nearly 7%. According to Yahoo Finance, gas prices have reversed their downward trend, ticking higher over the past week as oil has also risen in price. The national average at the pump sat at $3.13 per gallon on Tuesday, up 5 cents from a week ago, but still 38 cents lower from exactly one year ago, according to AAA data. According to Reuters, Global X, a provider of exchange-traded funds, has withdrawn its application for spot Bitcoin ETF, a regulatory filing showed on Tuesday, making it the first company among those that applied to the U.S. securities regulator for approval last year to do so. The company had about $51 billion of assets under management in its ETFs worldwide, as of December 2023, according to its website. According to Bloomberg, Shaquille O'Neal is still keen to buy an NBA basketball team, and also wants to get involved in Formula One. I would definitely like to, O'Neal said Tuesday in an interview with Bloomberg at the iConnections Global Alts Conference in Miami Beach. Whatever team is available. According to Yahoo Finance, shares of Apple took a hit on Tuesday, falling roughly 1.5% after TF International Securities analyst Ming-Kai Kuo released a report saying iPhone shipments will decline as much as 15% year-over-year 2024. Apple is set to announce its first quarter earnings results after the bell on Thursday. According to Kuo, who has accurately predicted Apple's moves in the past, a drop in iPhone sales in China coupled with the emergence of generative i-powered and foldable smartphones will put pressure on iPhone sales throughout the year. According to Reuters, cooling inflation in the United States gives the Federal Reserve room to potentially start cutting interest rates this summer, Citadel founder and billionaire investor Ken Griffin said on Tuesday. The timing of potential rate cuts has been the subject of speculation and debate in the markets for months. Most traders expect the central bank to kick off the cuts in May. According to Reuters, Mexico accepted a formal request from the United States on Tuesday to review alleged labor rights violations at call centers belonging to Spanish company Atento in the central Mexican state of Hidalgo. Mexico's economy ministry announced it accepted the request from U.S. trade officials in a joint statement along with the Mexican labor ministry. According to Reuters, Southwest Airlines has no plans to diversify its fleet towards Airbus aircraft and still wants to eventually take delivery of the Boeing 737 MAX 7 planes it has ordered, Vice President Treasurer Dean Jenkins said on Tuesday. Asked if he would consider diversifying the U.S.-based airline's fleet, he told journalists, that's not in the plans right now. Even if we wanted to, it's a number of years before you could get planes from Airbus. According to Bloomberg, Francis Gabriel Adel pledged to continue granting concessions to protesting farmers as he seeks to move beyond a crisis that has dogged his first three weeks as prime minister. In a speech on Tuesday detailing the government's broader priorities for the coming months, Adel added little to measures announced in the past few days to support the agriculture industry. According to Reuters, British media group Sky is planning to cut about 1,000 jobs across its business this year. A source familiar with the matter told Reuters on Tuesday, as it transitions to internet-based services from traditional satellite. According to Reuters, Canada's Ontario province on Tuesday announced a C$2 billion refurbishment of a nuclear power station near Toronto that would extend the aging plant's life by 30 years as the country bids to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. Provincial government-owned Ontario Power Generation will initiate planning and other pre-construction work for the Pickering Nuclear Generating Station this year and the project is expected to be completed by the mid-2030s, 
Ontario's Energy Minister Todd Smith said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, Bayer AG faces mounting pressure to come up with a new plan for handling its Roundup weedkiller litigation after getting hammered by U.S. jury verdicts totaling almost $4 billion over the last three months. The German conglomerate's latest courtroom loss was its biggest since Roundup cases started going to trial five and a half years ago, with a Pennsylvania jury awarding $2.25 billion to a former Roundup user who blamed his cancer diagnosis on long-term exposure to the herbicide. According to Bloomberg, Puerto Rico's bankrupt power utility and its creditors squared off in court Monday on whether bondholders have a legal right to the electricity provider's future revenue. The debate before the U.S. Court of Appeals for the First Circuit centers around whether the island's main energy supplier, Electric Power Authority or PREPA, must repay its creditors more than just the roughly $19 million sitting in reserve accounts that a bankruptcy court last year ruled was the bondholders' only secured lien. According to Reuters, Brazil ended 2023 with a net creation of 1.484 million jobs, said the Labor Ministry on Tuesday, a result that followed disappointing figures from December. Latin America's largest economy closed 430,159 formal jobs in December, a seasonally negative month due to the termination of workers hired before the holiday period. According to Reuters, Three U.S. soldiers were killed and dozens wounded after a drone hit a military outpost in Jordan, known as Tower 22, on Sunday. The location is just one of many bases the U.S. has in the Middle East. Here is what we know about the U.S. military presence in the Middle East. According to Bloomberg, some of the tech industry's most prominent and powerful leaders will descend on Capitol Hill Wednesday for a Senate hearing focused on protecting children online. Chief executive officers from Meta Platforms Inc., X, Snap Inc., TikTok and Discord will provide testimony and take questions from members of the Senate Judiciary Committee, which has supported several bills related to kids' digital safety. Congress has increasingly scrutinized social media platforms as growing evidence suggests that excessive use and the proliferation of harmful content may be damaging young people's mental health. According to Reuters, Avangrid, the U.S. unit of Spain's Iberdrola announced its first onshore wind project in Oklahoma, a 147.5 megawatts wind farm with 33 turbines called Pontotoc Wind, on Tuesday. While the race to reduce the reliance on fossil fuels has attracted investments in offshore wind farms, onshore wind farms, which produce less power, are currently more profitable in the United States. According to Reuters, Chevron is sending cargoes of Kazakhstan's CPC blend oil to Asia around Africa's Cape of Good Hope rather than via the Red Sea to avoid the risk of attacks by Yemen's Houthis, according to three industry sources and LSEG ship tracking data. The Iranian-aligned Houthis have stepped up attacks on shipping despite U.S.-led airstrikes on the group's positions in Yemen, leading more vessels to avoid using the Red Sea and the Suez Canal, the shortest sea route between Europe and Asia. According to Yahoo Finance, Spotify received an upgrade from UBS Tuesday, with analysts noting they are increasingly convinced the company's profit margin expansion is sustainable. UBS analyst Batya Levi upgraded the stock to buy from neutral and also upped the price target to $274 a share from the prior $179. This suggests about 25% upsides compared to current levels. According to Reuters, North American energy pipeline operator Enbridge said on Tuesday it will cut its workforce by 650 jobs in a bid to cut costs. The company said the cuts will begin in February and be completed by March 1. It will reduce vacant positions, contract positions and redeploy staff where possible, Enbridge said. According to Reuters, Italy's economy minister Giancarlo Giorgetta sought clarification from Unicredit CEO Andrea Orsel over the lender's potential interest in Popolari di Sandrio during a meeting held last week, two people close to the matter said. Both Unicredit and Italy's treasury declined to comment. According to Yahoo Finance, General Motors finally sees a road to profitability for its electric vehicles. Whether they hit that mark in 2024 is, well, as they say in texts, TBD. According to Yahoo Finance, the soft launch of the 2024-25 free application for federal student aid application had a $1.8 billion error in its inflation adjustment that may delay colleges releasing financial aid awards. 
more than 3.1 million applications have been submitted since the soft launch on December 30th. However, a miscalculation with the tables used in the student aid index calculation that accounted for inflation would have meant students would have received less in financial aid. According to Reuters, Southwest Airlines is willing to wait until 2026 or 2027 if necessary to take delivery of Boeing 737 MAX 7 aircraft, a senior executive said on Tuesday after safety concerns were likely to delay production. Southwest, the largest customer of the MAX 7, has already switched dozens of MAX 7 orders due for delivery in 2024 to the larger MAX 8 to avoid delays. Vice President Treasurer Dean Jenkins said the airline would continue with this policy until the Boeing plane is ready. According to Reuters, Brazil expects its public debt to surge by as much as 13.5% in 2024 and plans to advance in its debt lengthening strategy, according to the annual financing plan released by the country's treasury on Tuesday. According to Reuters, the Wall Street Journal is planning to restructure its Washington bureau and lay off some staff, news site Axios reported on Tuesday. The reorganization will also move some Washington-based economics coverage to New York, the Axios report said citing sources. According to Yahoo Finance, gas prices in the U.S. have moved back up again, according to AAA, after trending toward $3 a gallon for several weeks. As of January 30th, the national average gas price stood at $3.12 per gallon, with 27 states seeing prices at the pump below $3. The average price of gasoline has been on the decline since September and has dropped by over 70 cents per gallon since September's peak price of $3.88. According to Reuters, Agritech startup Inari Agriculture said on Tuesday it raised $103 million in its latest funding round, notching up a valuation of $1.65 billion. The latest round of equity financing was led by its existing investors Hanwha Impact, Canada Pension Plan Investment Board, Revis Capital, NGS Super, State of Michigan Retirement System and its founder flagship pioneering, Inari said. According to Reuters, major U.S. business groups sued California on Tuesday seeking to overturn the state's new sweeping climate disclosure laws that require companies to publicly report their greenhouse gas emissions and climate-related financial risks. The lawsuit was filed in Los Angeles federal court by the biggest U.S. business lobby, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, along with the American Farm Bureau Federation and several California business groups. They claim the first of their kind laws will impose massive costs on businesses and violate the constitutional free speech protections by compelling the disclosures. According to Bloomberg, for about a year, investors have bid up megacap tech shares on the theory that their exposure to artificial intelligence will usher in a new era of elevated growth and efficiency. Now the companies need to prove it. Microsoft Corp. and Alphabet Inc., two of the biggest players in i related software, will report after the market close, and Wall Street wants a stronger sense of when the rally driving technology will start moving the needle for earnings and revenue. Both stocks have been supported by AI excitement. Microsoft is above a historic $3 trillion valuation, while Google's parent company returned to all-time highs. According to Bloomberg, Venezuela said it will stop accepting deportees from the U.S. if the Biden administration follows through on a threat to renew sanctions. Migrant deportation flights would be immediately revoked as of February 13 if the U.S. takes the wrong step of intensifying economic aggression against Venezuela, Vice President Delcy Rodriguez said Tuesday on X. According to Reuters, J.P. Morgan has delayed a key decision on whether to lift the weighting of Venezuela's bonds in its widely followed MB Index series by a month, with the next update due by February 29. The move came as the United States reintroduced some sanctions on Venezuela after President Nicolas Maduro's main opposition rival, Maria Karina Machado, was barred at the weekend from running in the upcoming elections. According to Yahoo Finance, this is an op-ed from Lael Brainerd, White House National Economic Advisor, and Julie Su, Acting Secretary of Labor. American workers are making themselves heard. But just as workers are starting to lay the foundations for a stable future, the rise of artificial intelligence is creating new uncertainty. According to Bloomberg, gone are the days of starry stock market debuts that pushed valuations of electric vehicle makers above $100 billion. Now, 
floating an EV stock is only for the brave. A torrent of bad news for the sector this week confirms how far it has fallen in just a few years. First Renault saw scrapped an initial public offering of its EV and software arm Ampere citing valuation concerns. Then, Bloomberg reported Volkswagen AG has put efforts to seek outside investors for its Powerco battery unit on the back burner. According to Reuters, Italy's Treasury and KKR have agreed the terms of the bid to be presented by KKR for Telecom Italia's submarine cable unit Sparkle, three sources familiar with the matter said on Tuesday. The offer is part of the broader agreement between private equity fund KKR and Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney's government to jointly take over TIM's fixed access infrastructure. According to Reuters, French media company Vivendi said on Tuesday its management board proposed to its supervisory board, which gave its approval on the matter, a split up of its activities around four entities. Vivendi had said at the end of last year it was examining a split up of its activities. According to Bloomberg, an Argentine court ruled that the labor reform President Javier Malay tried to implement through decree is unconstitutional, the latest blow to his plans to overhaul the nation's economy. Argentina's dollar bonds due in 2030 edged 0.4 cent lower to about 41 cents on the dollar as of 4.10 p.m. Buenos Aires time, extending declines after La Nación first published the decision. The ruling was posted on the court's website on Tuesday. According to Bloomberg, Nigeria's Naira plunged to a record against the dollar following a revision of the methodology used to set the exchange rate, in effect the second devaluation of the currency in seven months. The local unit depreciated 31% to 1,413 Naira a dollar on Monday in the so-called NAFEX fixing, the official foreign exchange window, according to data published by FMDQ, which calculates the exchange rate for the West African nation. The move came after the Central Bank of Nigeria accused traders of manipulating the exchange rate by under-reporting transaction rates. According to Reuters, the Canadian dollar notched a two-week high against its U.S. counterpart on Tuesday, but the gains were modest a day ahead of a Federal Reserve policy decision and domestic GDP data. The loonie was trading 0.1% higher at 1.3402 to the greenback, or 74.62 U.S. cents, after touching its strongest intraday level since January 15 at 1.34. According to Reuters, Visa was sued on Tuesday by consumers who said the card payments network failed to make prepaid, vanilla, gift cards less likely to being drained by thieves. Ira Schumann, who leads the proposed class action in the White Plains, New York, federal court, said he bought eight $500 vanilla cards as holiday gifts for his employees in 2022 and 2023 only to learn later that cards had been emptied. According to Bloomberg, PayPal Holdings Inc. will reduce its workforce by about 9% as Chief Executive Officer Alex Chris, who took over in September, grapples with rising competition, profit pressures and a raft of analyst downgrades. In a letter to staff on Tuesday, Chris said the decision was made to right-size the company through both direct cuts and the elimination of open roles throughout the year. Affected staff will be notified by the end of the week, according to the letter, which was seen by Bloomberg News. According to Yahoo Finance, the media and entertainment industry's reckoning will continue in 2024 with more layoffs as rising costs and debt-ridden balance sheets continue to weigh on the embattled sector. Partly in an attempt to appease Wall Street, these companies over the past year have slashed billions of dollars worth of costs. In addition, under profit pressure, they rolled out ad-supported tiers, bundled their offerings, and raised the monthly prices of subscription plans. According to Reuters, the Kansas City Chiefs and San Francisco 49ers are headed for a high-stakes Super Bowl clash in Las Vegas but while there the two teams must abide by the NFL's gambling policy and resist trying their luck at the city's glitzy casinos. While NFL players can gamble during the regular season on other sports, a much stricter rule will be in place leading up to the February 11th Super Bowl, the first to be held in Las Vegas, that will bar the Chiefs and 49ers from betting on anything. According to Reuters, utility firm Hawaiian Electric said on Tuesday it was initiating 30-minute rolling outages until 9 p.m. in parts of Hawaii due to the unexpected loss of several large generators and no wind power resources. The utility said its largest generator, Hamakua Energy, was also not at full output and three combustion turbine units had tripped offline.
According to Reuters, short-dated Treasury yields rose and a gauge of global equities seesawed near two-year highs on Tuesday after strong U.S. labor market data again underscored a resilient economy and questioned how soon the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates. Gold prices climbed to a two-week high on an easing dollar and lower long-dated Treasury yields as investors awaited the Fed's outlook on rates and the economy when the U.S. Central Bank concludes on Wednesday its first policy meeting of 2024. According to Reuters, after successful testing in the U.S., Ukraine will soon receive its first big batch of long-range missiles made by Boeing that promise to extend its range deep into Russian-held territory, according to sources familiar with the matter. They could arrive on the battlefield as soon as Wednesday, Politico reported. According to Reuters, Mexico's heavily indebted state oil company Pemex will have about 200 billion pesos this year to cover almost all of its regular debt payments, a senior finance official said on Tuesday. Deputy Finance Minister Gabriel Yorio told reporters that some 145 billion pesos were allocated from the federal budget, which was approved last year by Congress adding the quantity also includes funds from the profit-sharing tax duck. According to Reuters, the African Development Bank has sold its long-awaited hybrid capital note, the first financing of its kind for multilateral development banks, which are under increasing pressure to find ways to boost their lending. The G20 group of major economies has urged multilateral lenders to explore hybrid financing structures, to try to maximize balance sheets and increase funding to help developing economies with crises including climate change. According to Reuters, the tech-heavy Nasdaq lost ground on Tuesday as the market awaited a spate of high-profile corporate earnings in the Federal Reserve convened for its monetary policy meeting. The SP500 closed essentially unchanged, hovering near Monday's all-time closing high, while the blue-chip Dow finished modestly higher. According to Bloomberg, Steve Eisman, best known for his big short bet against subprime mortgages, said he's now more long-oriented on the U.S. market despite others' deep concerns about ballooning federal deficits and crowding in stocks. The Neuberger Berman Group portfolio manager said there's no real sign that elevated U.S. debt poses a problem for markets or the U.S. government. He's equally sanguine on equities, despite the parallels that some perceive between today's market and the dot-com bubble era. According to Reuters, Starbucks missed Wall Street estimates for quarterly sales on Tuesday, in a sign that demand for its pricey coffees and cold drinks in the U.S. might be hitting a roadblock, heaping pressure as it grapples with a patchy recovery in China. Shares of the company fell more than 2% in extended trading. According to Yahoo Finance, Microsoft announced its second quarter earnings on Tuesday beating expectations on the top and bottom line. The company reported adjusted earnings per share of $2.93 on revenue of $62 billion, beating expectations of Edge. EPS of $2.78 on revenue of $61.1 billion. Shares of the company were off 1% following the announcement. According to Yahoo Finance, the Biden administration has announced a number of key updates to its AI executive order, including proposed rules for the training of powerful AI models and an AI talent hiring surge. The executive order, which Biden signed in October, calls on the federal government to develop guidelines for the use of AI across the government, ensure the U.S. remains ahead of competing countries in AI development, and establish safeguards protecting against potential AI abuses including fraud, bias, and discrimination. According to Reuters, registrations of Tesla vehicles in California dropped 10% in the last quarter of 2023, the first fall in more than three years in the state, which is one of the most important markets for the electric carmaker and considered a national trendsetter. A total of 47,592 Tesla vehicles were registered in California in the fourth quarter, compared with 52,782 a year earlier, according to data from California New Car Dealers Association. According to Reuters, U.S. fuel retailer Pilot Travel Centers said the president of its energy business and petroleum marketing chief have left the company in the latest shakeup after Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway took majority control last year. Brad Jenkins, who was president of Pilot Flying J Energy, and Bill Kashmarek, vice president of petroleum marketing and business development, are no longer with the company, it said in a statement.
According to Reuters, a Delaware judge on Tuesday ruled in favor of the investor plaintiffs who challenged billionaire Elon Musk's $56 billion Tesla pay package, a court filing showed. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in Asian markets. Wednesday will bring prompt tests of the just-released International Monetary Fund upgrades of U.S. and Chinese growth outlooks that could should set the tone for markets, starting with Asia on Wednesday. According to Reuters, real estate investment trust Boston Properties beat estimates for funds from operations in the fourth quarter on Tuesday, helped by healthy demand for office spaces as more companies asked employees to return to workplaces. The work-from-office mandate has led to an uptick in demand for the commercial real estate market, which has been recovering from a pandemic-induced slump. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden will travel to Michigan on Thursday to meet with United Auto Workers members at an event at a Detroit-area union hall, a campaign official told Reuters. The trip to the battleground state comes a week after the UAW endorsed Biden's re-election with Union President Sean Fain delivering a fiery speech in Washington that was also harshly critical of Republican former president and likely Biden election rival Donald Trump. According to Reuters, Brazilian plane-maker Embraer reported on Tuesday deliveries of 75 jets in the fourth quarter, making both its executive jets and commercial business slightly miss the full-year guidance. The company delivered 49 business jets in the last three months of the year, bringing the annual total to 115 aircraft, compared to its guidance of a range of 120 to 130 jets. According to Reuters, a re-imposition of U.S. sanctions on Venezuela's oil and gas sectors would hurt the OPEC country's ability to collect cash from its oil exports, crimp new energy investments and raise the risks of domestic fuel scarcity, analysts and executives said. Washington this week ordered a wind-down of all business transactions between U.S. entities and Venezuela's state miner Minervan, and said it would unwind in April its easing of energy sanctions if President Nicolas Maduro's administration does not stick to an agreement signed last year to accept conditions for a fair presidential election. According to Bloomberg, trading in bonds these days means having to put up with more frequent market gyrations, and that's just fine with big investors like PIMCO and BlackRock Inc. Increased volatility has been a feature in the Treasury market for the past two years, as spiraling inflation, Federal Reserve interest rate increases, mixed economic signals and stepped-up government borrowing all combined to keep investors on edge. This contrasts with the numbing conditions that prevailed for much of the prior decade amid the heavy hand of central bank support. According to Reuters, billionaire investor Kenneth Griffin, who has donated more than half a billion dollars to Harvard University, has halted his giving to the school over how it handled anti-Semitism on campus and a broader leadership crisis involving its president. Griffin, who started trading in his Harvard dormitory before becoming the most profitable hedge fund manager ever, told an audience at the Managed Funds Association conference in Miami on Tuesday that he stopped donations, for now. According to Reuters, a Delaware judge on Tuesday invalidated Elon Musk's $56 billion pay package for his work as Tesla's chief executive, siding with a Tesla shareholder who called the package unfair. Musk is one of the world's wealthiest people, according to Forbes magazine, and his 2018 compensation package for leading the electric vehicle maker much larger than any executive pay package to date. According to Reuters, exports from Latin American and Caribbean countries contracted last year after two years of strong post-pandemic growth, according to a report published on Tuesday by the Inter-American Development Bank, which warned of further decline. The 2.2% decline registered in 2023 resulted from both sliding prices of key raw materials and less volumes being shipped abroad, the report said, and marks a stark change from the 28% and 17% increases clocked in 2021 and 2022 respectively. According to Reuters, the Delaware judge who rescinded Elon Musk's record $56 billion compensation from Tesla on Tuesday has a reputation for her calm demeanor and demanding standards for corporate behavior. Chancellor Kathleen McCormick's ruling on Musk's pay follows decisions against a private equity firm that tried to wriggle out of a takeover deal and a CEO who shortchanged his own shareholders when he sold his company. According to Reuters, Apple supplier Skywork Solutions beat market estimates for quarterly profit on Tuesday, as stabilizing end markets and growing usage of 5G technology boost demand for the chipmaker's solutions. 
As telecom companies continue to roll out 5G technology beyond the smartphone, chipmakers are seeing a new pool to turn to other than traditional markets such as personal computers. According to Reuters, the US and European Union failed on Tuesday to reach a trade deal for critical battery minerals but are vowing to press ahead with talks to create a transatlantic marketplace for minerals and other components, the EU's top trade official said on Tuesday. European Commission Executive Vice President Valdis Dombrovskis told reporters after bilateral talks in Washington that there remain some outstanding issues on the European side, including aspects of the U.S. green energy subsidy law known as the Inflation Reduction Act that the EU sees as discriminatory. According to Bloomberg, Advanced Micro Devices Inc., the second biggest maker of computer processors, gave a weak revenue forecast for the current period, echoing rival Intel Corpy's downbeat view of the PC and data center chip markets. First quarter revenue will be about $5.4 billion, AMD said in a statement Tuesday. The average analyst estimate was $5.77 billion. Gross margin. The percentage of sales remaining after deducting the cost of production, will be about 52%, in line with projections. According to Reuters, Juniper Networks, which is being acquired by Hewlett Packard Enterprise, reported fourth quarter revenue below market expectations on Tuesday, hurt by weak spending by its cloud computing and enterprise clients. The Sunnyvale, California based company reported revenue of $1.37 billion compared to expectations of $1.41 billion, according to LSCG data. According to Reuters, the Biden administration could loan $1.5 billion to Holtec International as soon as next month to restart the closed Palisades nuclear power plant in Michigan, Bloomberg reported on Tuesday, citing people familiar with the matter. In October, Holtec filed with the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission to reopen the 800-megawatt Palisades plant, saying it had also applied for a loan to help restart the plant. According to Bloomberg, Walmart Inc. announced a three-for-one stock split, saying a lower price will help more of its employees buy shares. Sam Walton believed it was important to keep our share price in a range where purchasing whole shares, rather than fractions, was accessible to all of our associates, Walmart Chief Executive Officer Doug McMillan said in a statement Tuesday. According to Yahoo Finance, with labor shortages subsiding but still concerning, just 4% of CEOs are making return to office a top priority in 2024, according to a recent survey by the conference board. CEOs are throwing their hands up when it comes to getting workers back into the office full-time, Diana Scott, human capital center leader at the conference board, told Yahoo Finance. Hybrid work is getting the job done, and they have bigger things to worry about. Attracting and retaining talent is their number one priority for 2024. According to Bloomberg, Adtalum Global Education Inc. shares are slumping Tuesday, wiping out about $400 million in market value, after Softket Capital Management LLC said it's betting against the for-profit education company. It's the latest call from the hedge fund, founded by short seller Fami Quadir, who made a prescient 2015 bet against the drugmaker formerly called Valiant Pharmaceuticals near its peak. The firm also made a winning call against shares of Wirecard AG, the German payment operator that crumbled in 2020 amid allegations of fraud. According to Reuters, semiconductor testing equipment maker Teradyne forecast its first quarter revenue below Wall Street estimates on Tuesday, hurt by lower demand for its chip testing equipment. Shares of the company fell around 6% in extended trading. According to Reuters, Equity Residential forecast its full-year fund from operations below analysts' estimates on Tuesday, in a sign that the Real Estate Investment Trust might be facing pricing pressures in its West Coast market. Rental supply remains elevated across the U.S. However, the supply pressure, relative to demand, is more acute in the Sunbelt region which includes markets such as Austin and Atlanta and San Francisco, compared to East Coast markets such as New York and Boston. According to Bloomberg, Microsoft Corp. posted its strongest revenue growth since 2022, spurred by interest in new artificial intelligence products that in turn are driving renewed spending on cloud computing. Revenue in the second quarter, which ended December 31, rose 18% to $62 billion, while profit was $2.93 a share, the company said in a statement Tuesday.
Analysts polled by Bloomberg on average estimated per share earnings of $2.78 on sales of $61.1 billion. According to Bloomberg, Microsoft Corp. and Alphabet Inc. fell in late trading after reporting earnings, sending a $245 billion exchange-traded fund tracking the Nasdaq 100 lower. Asian equity benchmarks are set for modest declines. Alphabet sank after reporting revenue from its core search advertising business that fell short of estimates, overshadowing an otherwise strong end to the year. Microsoft's cloud growth disappointed some on Wall Street, even as the company posted its strongest revenue growth since 2022. According to Reuters, energy technology firm Holtec International said on Tuesday it was optimistic about the federal loan process to restart the closed Palisades nuclear power plant in Michigan. We hope for a timely approval to bring the plant back to full power operation toward the end of 2025, said Nick Culp, a Holtec spokesman said in response to a Reuters request for comment but did not disclose the loan size. According to Reuters, Ryanair will take as many Boeing MAX 10 aircraft as it can get, the airline's CEO told Reuters on Tuesday, reiterating his confidence in the U.S. planemaker. Boeing, long a symbol of America's manufacturing prowess, is in the crosshairs of regulators, politicians and airlines following a harrowing mid-air cabin panel blowout on a passenger-filled 737 MAX 9 jet operated by Alaska Airlines earlier this month. According to Reuters, British businesses started 2024 with their confidence at the highest level in nearly two years but their plans for more staffing are not translating into accelerating wage growth, according to a survey published on Wednesday. In a report likely to be welcomed by the Bank of England as it readies its latest interest rate decision, the Lloyds Bank business barometer jumped by 9 points to 44% this month, its strongest since February 2022. According to Bloomberg, Elon Musk's $55 billion pay package at Tesla Inc. was struck down by a Delaware judge after a shareholder challenged it as excessive, a ruling that would take a giant bite out of Musk's wealth and put the fate of his companies in question. That is if the ruling survives a likely appeal. According to Bloomberg, Carlyle Group Inc. co-founder David Rubenstein and Aries Management Corp. Co-founder Michael Arugetti agreed to buy the Baltimore Orioles baseball team from the Angelos family for $1.73 billion, Puck News reported, citing people with knowledge of the matter. Rubenstein will be the control person, the term Major League Baseball uses for team's decision-makers, Puck said. Arugetti's role isn't clear, the news service said. According to Reuters, I-related companies lost $190 billion in stock market value late on Tuesday after Microsoft, Alphabet and Advanced Micro Devices delivered quarterly results that failed to impress investors who had sent their stocks soaring. The sell-off following the tech giants' reports after the bell underscored investors' elevated expectations following an AI-fueled stock market rally in recent months that propelled their shares to record highs with the promise of incorporating the technology across the corporate landscape. According to Bloomberg, China is embarking on its biggest consolidation in the banking industry by merging hundreds of rural lenders into regional behemoths amid growing signs of financial stress. After engineering mergers of rural cooperatives and rural commercial banks in at least seven provinces since 2022, policymakers pinpointed tackling risks at the $6.7 trillion sector as one of its top priorities for this year. That means another wave of consolidation is on the way across the nation. According to Bloomberg, the Federal Reserve will likely hold interest rates steady for a fourth straight meeting but avoid signaling an imminent interest rate cut. The Federal Open Market Committee is poised to keep rates in a range of 5.25% to 5.5% at its two-day policy meeting ending Wednesday, a 22-year high first reached in July. The rate decision and accompanying statement will be released at 2 p.m. in Washington. Chair Jerome Powell will hold a press conference 30 minutes later. According to Bloomberg, oil headed for its first monthly gain since September as an escalation of attacks on ships in the Red Sea spurred a diversion of tanker traffic and raised fears about a wider conflict in the Middle East. The market is also waiting for a U.S. response to a drone assault that killed American troops in Jordan over the weekend. President Joe Biden said he has made a decision on how to respond, without providing details, adding that Iran was responsible for providing the weaponry used in the strike. Tehran has denied involvement and urged the U.S. to use diplomacy to ease tensions.
According to Bloomberg, at the height of the Spock boom, liberated startups capitalized on the ability to tout lofty goals about the years ahead without much of a risk of legal fallout. Now, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's new rules tightening SPAC's disclosure requirements are set to clamp down on such forecasts when they come into force as soon as later this year. In hindsight, some companies that merged with blank check vehicles during the pandemic era boom may wish they hadn't talked up their fortunes so optimistically. According to Bloomberg, Pacific Investment Management Company has been one of the loudest profits of doom on private credit in recent months. Now it's saying cracks in the red-hot asset class could appear as early as this year, and that it's poised to use roughhouse tactics more common to hedge funds to grab bargains. The investment giant has a history of making chunky contrarian bets going back to a money-spinning punt on cheap mortgage debt after the financial crisis. If it turns out to be right as the Cassandra of private credit, this booming $1.7 trillion market is about to go through a grueling reality check. According to Bloomberg, Samsung Electronics Company posted its fourth straight quarter of profit decline in the holiday quarter, after a long-awaited recovery in chip and electronics demand delivered few returns for the world's biggest memory maker. South Korea's most valuable company said net income fell 74% in the last three months of the year to 6.02 trillion won. That beat the average analyst estimate of 3.16 trillion won, however, thanks in part to a tax credit. According to Bloomberg, Nintendo Co.'s recent climb to a record high is looking increasingly stretched as investors wait for news on the successor to its aging Switch game console. Shares of the Mario and Zelda creator have soared 47% in the past year, compared with a 28% gain in Topix. Expectations for a new machine that some have already dubbed, Switch 2 inches has fueled gains, though there has been no official word yet from the company. Hope for more popular films featuring Nintendo characters and the ongoing boom in Japan's stock market have also contributed. According to Bloomberg, record inflows into a handful of key Chinese exchange-traded funds suggest state-led funds have sprung into action to buffer the stock market plunge. The Watai Pinebridge CSI 300, E-Fund CSI 300, China AMC CSI 300, Harvest CSI 300 and China AMC SSE 50 ETF together saw 128.5 billion yuan of inflows so far in January, more than five times the aggregate amount seen in July 2015, when the so-called national team jumped in to stem a route. According to Reuters, New Zealand will start talks on Wednesday with Australia about cooperating with the AUK-US trilateral defence partnership between Australia, Britain and the US. Foreign Minister Winston Peters said, adding Washington needed to do more in the Pacific to counter other political influences there. Peters heads to Australia on Wednesday for an inaugural joint meeting of New Zealand and Australian foreign and defence ministers, and said the talks would also canvass what joining an expanded AUK-US grouping would mean for Wellington. According to Bloomberg, Japan's factory output rebounded in December supporting the view that the sputtering economy returned to growth in the final quarter of last year even as doubts remain over the strength of domestic demand. Industrial production gained 1.8% from November, after falling the previous month, as output of machinery and chemicals expanded, the industry ministry said Wednesday. That was the biggest gain since June, though smaller than the consensus view for a 2.5% increase. According to Bloomberg, Bank of Japan board members continued to discuss prospects for ending the negative rate policy during their meeting last week, with some members indicating conditions that would allow that move are increasing. One member said current economic conditions offer a golden opportunity to end the world's last negative rate by increasing rates in Japan for the first time since 2007. Another said the certainty for achieving a virtuous cycle linking wage gains to demand led inflation is rising, according to a summary of opinions released Wednesday. According to Bloomberg, Starbucks Corp. Sales grew at their slowest pace in a year and earnings missed Wall Street's estimates as a sluggish spending took a toll. Same store sales, those at company-operated stores open for more than a year, rose 5% in the company's fiscal first quarter, which ended December 31. That's lower than the 6.4% analysts expected, and represents the slowest growth rate since a year earlier, when weakness in China hurt results. According to Bloomberg, 
Australia's headline inflation cooled further in the final three months of 2023, bolstering the case for the Reserve Bank to keep interest rates unchanged next week and sending the currency lower. The Consumer Price Index advanced 4.1% in the fourth quarter from a year earlier, coming in below economists' estimate of 4.3%, Australian Bureau of Statistics data showed Wednesday. A closely watched core inflation gauge, the trimmed mean, rose 4.2%, also less than forecast. According to Bloomberg, U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo warned that Chinese-made electric vehicles pose significant national security risks, as the Biden administration weighs additional tariffs on autos from the Asian country as well as a separate measure to protect Americans' personal information. Electric and autonomous vehicles are collecting a huge amount of information about the driver, the location of the vehicle, the surroundings of the vehicle, Raimondo said during an Atlantic Council fireside chat on Tuesday. Do we want all that data going to Beijing? According to Bloomberg, dollar bond sales in Asia are off to their weakest start in eight years, bucking a strong global trend as regional borrowers raise cheaper funds at home and wait for the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates. High borrowing costs prompted Philippines property firm Vista Land Lifescapes Inc. to postpone its sale, contributing to the 28% year-on-year drop in U.S. currency debt issuance. Sales in ex-Japan Asia has totaled just $18.2 billion since 2024 began. Bloomberg compiled data show. This is in stark contrast to the US and Europe, where issuers have smashed records amid a deal's bonanza. According to Reuters, Asian central banks may see scope to loosen monetary policy later this year as inflation moderates, heightening prospects for a soft landing in the region's economies, the International Monetary Fund said on Wednesday. Average inflation in Asia fell to 2.6% in 2023 from 3.8% in 2022, with particularly swift progress in emerging economies, Krishna Srinivasan, director of the IMF's Asia and Pacific Department, told a news conference. According to Reuters, China's manufacturing activity contracted for the fourth straight month in January, an official factory survey showed on Wednesday suggesting the sprawling sector was struggling to regain momentum at the start of 2024. The official purchasing manager's index rose to 49.2 in January from 49.0 in December, below the 50 mark separating growth from contraction and was in line with a median forecast of 49.2 in a Reuters poll. According to Reuters, oil prices edged off in early Asian trading on Wednesday on continued bearish fundamentals, following gains in the previous session amid an escalating conflict in the Middle East. The March Brent crude futures, which expires today, fell 37 cents to $82.50 a barrel by 0146 GMT. The more actively traded April contract fell 24 cents to $82.26 a barrel. According to Reuters, Asian shares fell broadly on Wednesday while the Australian dollar slid after surprisingly soft domestic inflation data and short-dated Treasury yields stayed elevated ahead of a rate decision from the Federal Reserve. Chinese markets wobbled after an official factory survey showed China's manufacturing activity in January contracted for a fourth straight month. According to Bloomberg, Microsoft Corp. Alphabet Inc.'s Google and Advanced Micro Devices Inc., three companies working harder than nearly anyone to weave artificial intelligence into their products, are finding that, when it comes to AI, investors are hard to please. Shares of the tech giants slipped in late trading Tuesday after they delivered results for the last three months of 2023 and forecasts for the current quarter. All three took pains to highlight progress on AI. In AMD's case, the company predicted that its new AI processors will generate even more sales than expected. Microsoft touted how users were embracing its AI assistance, and Google said the technology was improving its search and cloud computing services. According to Bloomberg, China's factory activity contracted for a fourth straight month in January as new orders shrank, suggesting weak demand continues to hamper the economy ahead of the upcoming Lunar New Year holiday. The official manufacturing purchasing managers index reached 49.2 this month, the National Bureau of Statistics said in a statement on Wednesday, above December's reading but still below the 50 mark that separates expansion from contraction. The number was slightly worse than what economists had expected. According to Bloomberg, Templewater, an alternative investment firm co-founded by a former Deutsche Bank AG banker, 
is seeking as much as $800 million for two funds in Asia, in what it calls a challenging market with fundraising close to a decade low. The new funds will target mid-sized firms in Asia and clean energy technology companies, said Cliff Jong, who started the company in 2018 with Investec Group, an Anglo-South African banking and wealth management group. The $1.7 billion asset manager has started raising $400 million to $500 million for its second private equity fund, doubling its previous pool, and is seeking $300 million for a decarbonization fund, Zhang said in an interview. According to Bloomberg, a sell-off in Chinese stocks extended on Wednesday, with a key index wiping out all the gains spurred by hopes of stronger support measures by the authorities. The CSI 300 benchmark for mainland shares declined as much as 1.1% following data that showed another monthly contraction in manufacturing activity. The latest move erases the advance recorded since the close of January 22, when a report of a $279 billion rescue package and authorities' pledge of more forceful measures triggered a rebound in Chinese equities. According to Reuters, Jakir Khan, an Indian farm worker, says he has cut down on food as his income has halved. There are fewer and fewer opportunities, he says, for employment in his small village in Uttar Pradesh state. Khan says his monthly income has come down to 5,000 Indian rupees from 10,000 Indian rupees before the pandemic, while his weekly expenses on food have gone up 60%. In November, he took a 100,000 rupees loan from relatives. According to Bloomberg, President Joe Biden's top national security aide promoted further communications with China, including with President Xi Jinping, while insisting the U.S. would continue to pursue so-called de-risking measures. We will take further steps as we go forward, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said at a Council on Foreign Relations event Tuesday evening in Washington. According to Reuters, Pacific Islands nations that want to connect to U.S.-funded undersea cables will need to secure their digital ecosystems to guard against data risks from China, a senior U.S. State Department official said. The United States pledged last year to jointly fund two undersea cables, to be built by Google, connecting the U.S. territory of Guam with hubs in Fiji and French Polynesia, and further branching out across remote Pacific Islands. According to Reuters, Australia's corporate regulator said on Wednesday that a court found Westpac engaged in unethical conduct while carrying out an 12 billion Australian dollars interest rate swap transaction in 2016, the largest of its kind in the country. The Australian Securities and Investments Commission said Westpac, one of the country's biggest banks, will pay a maximum penalty of 1.8 million Australian dollars, along with 8 million Australian dollars for the regulator's litigation costs. According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average was set for its best January in 26 years, despite a decline for the benchmark index on Wednesday as chip sector shares tracked overnight losses in U.S. peers. The Nikkei was up 7.21% for the month as of the midday recess, its best start to the year since about a 9% jump in January 1998, just topping the 7.15% rise in 2013 at the start of Abenomics. According to Bloomberg, the world is on the cusp of what's likely to be the last big refining boom as India embarks on a capacity expansion to accommodate the country's rising thirst for fossil fuels. The South Asian nation has set in motion a building blitz at its oil refineries to raise production of traditional transport fuels such as gasoline and diesel, which could lift capacity by more than 20% over the next five years. Rystad Energy puts the cost of additions at around $60 billion. According to Reuters, Asian central banks may see scope to loosen monetary policy later this year as inflation moderates, the International Monetary Fund said on Wednesday and called on China to give a clear message in how it plans to address its property woes. Average inflation in Asia fell to 2.6% in 2023 from 3.8% in 2022, with particularly swift progress in emerging economies, Krishna Srinivasan, director of the IMF's Asia and Pacific Department, told a news conference. According to Reuters, Japanese e-commerce conglomerate Rakuten Group said on Wednesday that it will issue $1.8 billion of U.S. dollar-denominated three-year senior notes at an interest rate of 11.25%. The fundraising will allow Rakuten to fully buy back its 10.25% senior notes and 3.546% senior notes due in 2024, 
which have a combined principal outstanding of $1.75 billion. According to Bloomberg, Millennium Management is backing former Goldman Sachs Group Inc. Managing Director Jamie Goodman's upcoming Asia hedge fund firm with $500 million, a rare deal of its kind for Izzy Englander's behemoth in the region, said people with knowledge of the matter. Goodman plans to focus on Asia-Pacific equity capital market deals such as initial public offerings, follow on share sales and block trades, said the people, who asked not to be identified discussing private information. He will manage Millennium's money exclusively for a period of time, one of the people said. According to Reuters, Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen has written to Pope Francis offering support for his concerns over the use of artificial intelligence and pledging deeper cooperation with the island's sole European ally. Taipei has watched with concern as Pope Francis has moved to improve relations with China. The democratically governed island has formal ties with only 12 countries, largely due to Chinese pressure. 